I'm very happy that our evening events, the highlights always in our program, will begin today with a special treat, poetry and philosophy. It was never an easy relationship. Heidegger calls it two brothers living on very distant mountaintops. But we have one thing in common, and that's language. And how we live with language, this is, has become for philosophers last century and in this century a very important question. We distrust the language of metaphysics, the language of the tradition. But we also distrust our ability to invent or to speak a different language. Die Sprache spricht und nicht der Mensch. Daher existieren wir noch. That was the entrance sentence of my book, Technik und Gelassenheit. Language speaks, not human beings. Therefore, we still exist. So this is something we need language. And we want the people who have the most brave to follow language instead of their own little thoughts, just follow what the word says, are obviously the poets. And they give us the role model, even for our philosophical text. Stop controlling the text. Allow the language to speak. And today we have the great honor to have one of the most esteemed French poets with us, Michel Didi who also happened in his person to be a philosopher, I guess somehow, because he was a former president of the Collège International de Philosophie in Paris. So he might be, have his two brothers in its own breast. <laughs> so anyway, he has also, you understand, a, a poet who is forced to speak not in his own language, is really a poor, poor person. So if he does, as the honor to speak English to us. I hope there's probably a lot of French in there anyway. But still that he does this, it's a great, great thing he does for us and we are very grateful for it because French is not so, not so bad. But I would kind of refuse to, to read a, a German uh, <laughs> poet, German Gedicht in another language, whatever. So anyway, Alain Bacu will now do the more formal introduction after my welcome to him and tell us a little bit about him for the students who are not in his class. Okay. Yes, it, I am very glad to introduce Michel de Guy here. And uh, uh, fundamentally, because he is really one of the most important poets in France today. And so, uh, for me, uh, poetry is really also a very important thing, a very important fight against the destruction of language. And Michel de Guy is a fighter, a real fighter, in language, in poetry. And so, uh, it's uh, for me an honor to present Michel de Guy to you. Biographically, I shall be very short. Because, uh, first, a poet has no age at all. <laughs> he is immortal. <laughs> and so we can see here, uh, <laughs> <the> immortal. <laughs> After that, the life of Michel de Guy was the life of a poet of a writer and also of a professor. In, uh, uh, during a long time, he teach and served in the University of Paris 8. Uh, University of Paris 8 was a very, and is, a very good university. And uh, the principal reason is that in the University of Paris 8, Michel de Guy and me, <laughs> so, uh, like, naturally, the succession of the University of uh, Paris 8 
is the European graduate school, <laughs> as you can see. And so uh, we can see that Schirmacher is also our president. <laughs> Uh, uh, Michel de Guy was also a great president of the International College of Philosophy, and I was also in the college at that time. And the election of Michel de Guy was a triumph, <laughs> without opposition. <laughs> All the voices, something like a post-Soviet election. <laughs> The work of uh, Michel de Guy is uh, uh, a very complex work because he is uh, a poet, fundamentally a poet, but also a writer, a critic. And uh, you can find in English this book, Given Giving, which is selected poems of Michel de Guy. And it's uh, very important, I think, for you want to know something of the contemporary French philosophy, to have this book and to read this book. It's a University of California Press, as a editor. In, in French, uh, three group of poems uh, of the 60s, of the 70s, and of the 80s, under the title of We Dire, first, Poem 2 and Gisant. I, I don't translate. <coughs> and uh, after that, uh, in prose, uh, uh, three books, three recent books, La Raison Poétique, Poetic Reason, in uh, 2000, Galilée, Un homme de peu de foi, Un homme de peu de foi, and it's a uh, not, not a biographical essay, but a subjective essay, an homme de peu de foi, and this year, sans retour. That is the sum part of the great work of Michel de Guy. Michel de Guy, thank you to be here. <laughs> Receive this uh, excessive portrait you just replaced, and I observe that you pronounce hate for our university. <laughs> university hate. <laughs> for the... uh, rather than a lecture after this and these long daily days of lecture, <clears throat> I choose to propose to you a short show in two parts, short parts. Mm -hmm. First, a short reading that's a portrait of the lecturer in artist or of the artist in poet and of the poet in two or three poems, maybe four. Second, instead of reading a prepared conference I brought with me but written, <coughs> translated some months ago, which of course I still agree with, I shall read, after this reading, three of pages of quite recent reflections about poetry or poetics 